Hello YouTube, I'm Arnd Peter, and today I'd like to show you how to do movement in a very compact way. So this is back to basics. We you all pretty much know how to do this movement type thing. We, um, we just press the arrow keys and moves. One of the first things on our game maker. Um, and we're going to be talk about how to do that thing only with as little code as possible, as compactly as possible. So the way I have it set up now is like this. So if you've been using GameMaker for a while, you probably recognize this. Certainly, if you've been watching my tutorials, you you probably recognize this code because I this is pretty much always how I do this basic four direction movement thing. I just write them all out like this. It takes eight lines, um, and I've probably written this thousands of times. But just just recently, I was thinking, what if I could make that smaller? So I thought about it for a little bit, and I figured out a more compact way to write this same code. And this is what it looks like. So this will achieve the exact same thing as the previous movement. You see? It works exactly the same. The thing that probably looks odd to you is the fact that I'm using these functions in like in a math equation. And this derives from the fact that in GameMaker there's only two data types. There's reals and strings. So um, strings are, you know, words, sentences and stuff. However, um, reals are numbers, okay? So it doesn't identify a boolean variable. Right? It doesn't identify the true or false, which would correspond to these functions being either true or false. Um, and st instead, they represent those as ones and zeros. So if we're moving right, then this will be one. And assuming we're not pressing the left button, then this will be a zero. So one minus zero is uh, eight times that, that is. This is what the equation would look like if we were moving right. So as you can see, it'll add eight to x. And of course, if we're moving left, the equation will look like this, and we'll be moving to the left because it's negative now. So that is how this works. And as I showed you, it works exactly the same. But one thing I'd like to point out about about this um, or this basic method is that you're not always moving the same speed. So when I'm moving right, it's eight. When I'm moving left, it's eight. When I'm moving up, it's eight. But when I'm moving up and left, you can see it goes faster. So that's that's going faster than than like that. Um, and that's just because, you know, if you're, going, if you're moving two directions in the same speed, your overall direction is actually some combination of those. So we're going to find a way to fix that, and we're going to do it in a compact way. So I've seen a lot of people fix this using if statements, and there's a lot of ways to do it, and it gets messy usually. It's kind of hard to think about. So now I'm, I'm going to show you the most compact way I've found it to do that trick. So I'm going to kind of break this up a little bit. I'm going to store these, um, these sections in uh, variables. So our net horizontal will be like that. So this this whole thing will either be one if we're moving right, negative one if we're moving to the left, or zero if we're not moving or they're canceling each other. Um, and then likewise, this will represent that same unit representation of for vertical. All right. Now, if both the horizontal and the vertical are one, then the overall magnitude will not be one. It'll be the square root of two because of you know the the Pythagorean. Pythagorean theorem and all that. So basically what we want to do is we want each of these to be weighted less if they're both being um, pressed, if they're both um, non-zero. So we're going to determine that way. We're going to say bar mag equals point distance zero zero or, or most people think of point distance only in terms of finding distance between two points, but if you have kind of a vector-like notation like this, it can also be used to find the magnitude of the vector really easily. Now that we have the magnitude, we need only do or divided by mag and ver divided by mag. And this will um, adjust it for that case of going diagonal. Now, um, regardless of which way you're moving, you'll be moving the same speed so you can see. Um, I got ahead of myself. I did this last time I recorded the tutorial as well. No, you will not because, of course, when the magnitude is zero, you're not moving. But we get division by zero over here. Mm -hmm -hmm. Well, um, when this, when the magnitude goes out to be zero, we're going to just make it one. And of course, we could use an if statement, but I'm going to use another quick tips trick. I'm going to bound it. So. This will ensure that it will never go below one by adding this little code around it. And you can watch my binding t quick tips tutorial if you want to learn more on that. So now, 
the magnitude will be set to 1, so we can't get the division by 0, and this will always go at the same speed. So you can see diagonally, same speed as to the right, or, or horizontally, I suppose. And that is all for the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you found it useful. Um, please let me know what you think in the comments. I'm always curious to see what you guys think of these little tricks. Um, so with that, I will see you guys next time.